Welcome to our second tutorial block. Today we want to talk about compression and I want to show you a project from a female vocal singer. She came to us and asked us if she can record some demo projects for the customer to listen and show some references. We got here the vocal, the vocal file and the playback. So just listen up and then we talk about the other stuff. So I think that was enough. I have prepared some for you right here. So at first I want to show you the vocal track unmixed, straight recorded. Yeah, I drop off my pants, so just listen up. It's been nine years since that kiss. I can help but reminisce. Hey, Michelle, do you remember? Okay, you listen. That was the clear vocal file without any effects or processing on it. Um, I've made not really much in this vocal track. You see, I put a gate in it and uh, some a little bit pitch correct to make a little bit of the fine tuning and all that stuff. So. Yeah, we got prepared that for you. This is the, the, the normal Cubase compressor. At first I want to show you the buttons. That's the threshold. Um, the threshold says... The threshold is better to explain. The threshold make a line. And we told the compressor if we use the threshold like on minus 21.7 dB, everything was going up like minus 21.7 dB would be compressed. Then we got the next button, the ratio. The ratio told us if we go the signal over that minus 21.7 dB, then they put down the peak like right now 3 to 1. The makeup the makeup button shows you when you compress the file how many dB should have the output more than the compressed file because the problem is when you have a normal audio file like this and it's uncompressed, the peaks are on minus 3, minus 4 dB. So then we compressed it. 
then maybe the highest peak is on minus 15. And then we see when before the highest peak was on minus 3 and right now after compression the highest peak was minus um, 10. Then we have a reduction of 7 dB. You know what I'm saying? And then we can put up the whole signal up. So we have 7 dB reduction and I put it 7 dB up. So we are on zero. But we think you compress the file. So that 7 dB are loud, 7 dB compressed are louder like 7 dB uncompressed because you don't have that much on dynamic in the vocal or in the audio track. Then we have here the scales for input, the gain reduction and the output. This is the threshold. See when I move that and this is the ratio. So the soft knee button means that when you compress the file and you compress it like with a high ratio the soft knee is good to punch in the ratio smoothly. Then we got here the auto makeup that means that the compressor decide how many dB if you go up and not you. So sometimes that's a good feature but um, I really like to use it by myself and it adjusts their self. Then we got the attack button. The attack button means how long can we have the signal input before the compressor start to work. That's in milliseconds, so normal for um, vocal compression is so between five and ten milliseconds. That's a that's a good that's a good attack. So if you wanna use other instrument like kick drum, then we got normal attack time from around 20 or 30 milliseconds because we want to catch the transients and don't want to have a kick that sounds so like oh so so boring and not punchy and not in your face so then we got the whole button the whole button means so um, when the signal goes under the threshold then how long works the compressor? So when we, for example, we have here 100 milliseconds, so the threshold goes under this minus 30 or this minus 23.1 dB, then the compressor have the same ratio or works in the same ratio uh, 100 milliseconds after and then we have the release time the release time means how it's like like a fade out how many how many time need the compressor from the gain reduction full peak to empty to do nothing with it. Then you can have here so auto release. That sometimes is a good idea that the compressor can decide how long it or how how many millisecond seconds um, he wanna use for the signal to release or to unwork. Then we got the analyzers button. Um, with the analyzer button you can decide if the compressor should work with the peaks 
or with the RMS. RMS means root mean square. That's the dynamic between the loudest and the lowest part of the wave. I would like to use in this case to work with peaks. Yeah, so um, there was um, the whole thing about the compressor. Now I show you how I would work in this case of wrong. I can help but reminisce. Him First, I use one to three ratio. A little bit of makeup game up. Him shadow, you remember? It's been nine years since that kiss. I can help but reminisce. Him shadow, you remember? It's been nine years since that kiss. I can help but reminisce. Him shadow, you remember? It's the nine years since that kiss. I can help but reminisce. Him shadow, you remember? It's the nine years since that kiss. I can help but reminisce. Him shadow, you remember? It's the nine years since that kiss. I can help but reminisce. Yeah, I think that sounds good. I think that sounds really dynamic but punchy. And that's what we want to have. So right now we listen up with the playback. That kiss. I can help but Yeah, I think that's the right way that works. Yeah, we can little uh, can put a little bit the fine tuning and fine adjusting that much, but that's your work. Um, I think mm, that's enough in this case with the compression. I think we have a lot to talk about the compression. There are so many sections like the RMS or the P compression or the live button um, and the metering and all that stuff. But step by step. First, we make the main categories on the tutorials and then we go to every main category and get and work with some other categories like the RMS or uh, the last block uh, about the EQing, like um, the minimum and maximum linear phase equalizer and all that stuff. So um, we keep you updated. Check out our other blocks on our website.